Let's podcast from the ACC tournament in Washington, D.C. Alongside Joe Giglio, I'm Joe Ovias. Big thanks to Hometown Realty for sponsoring our ACC tournament coverage this week while we're in Washington, D.C. Check them out, myhtr.com. And, of course, big thanks to Copiers Plus for sponsoring the podcast, our title sponsor for many, many months now. Check them out, copiers-plus.com. Again, that's copiers-plus.com. Uh, you were a Game of Thrones guy until Game of Thrones no, oh, until sucked. The end. Until the end. I mean, the last season still sucked. But what did Kevin Keats say to the god of coaching firings? Not today, sir. Not today with the Wolfpack having a really impressive um, start to the game in that it was not a repeat of what we saw against Louisville. It was not a repeat of what we saw against Syracuse the last time these two teams in Raleigh. Met, yes. And things kind of spiraled out of control for the Wolfpack. This was a game that was competitive at the jump. And in the second half, Joe, they really turned it on, frustrated Syracuse to no end. And they walk out of here with a win, which creates a very special last call for basketball. Big for Thursday, Joe. Ooh, I was gonna let's say, go. I was going to say, get us those deeks. Get it. Get everybody going. Your deeks. We got the uh, license. But no, the word I want to use for state is desperation. Okay. I was actually thinking about this because you've been. I feel like you're harsh on state sometimes about oh, like geez. you get a little retro in terms of like, oh, they'll never do it. They've never can do this, that and the other. But I thought about you for this particular reason. OK, the way that state played today is the way that Duke and Carolina for the better part of 40 years, like 95 percent of the time. That's the urgency they play with. OK, that's their culture. That's what they played to. Yeah. No matter who the coach is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So state to your point, why does it take being embarrassed for 10 minutes against Louisville? Why does it take the threat of your coach being fired? Why does it take losing five of six games heading into this tournament? Like, why can't you summon that urgency mm -hmm. on, on a regular basis? I thought they did last year. This year, it's been a challenge. They came out tonight, played with a purpose. It was impressive. I just want to know why you're choosing violence early in the show today no, no, no. about I'm, me being too critical about NC State. No, no, no. You you, you like to retcon some harshness. But I was pointing out, I was trying to support your point, which is, what is NC State's problem? Just just be the two Hall of Famers. Don't worry about it. You know? they're, they're not even dealing with I, Hall hey, of Famers I, anymore. I, I saw Gary Williams in the hallway today. I'm ready to fight. Apparently, let's go. Apparently, you are ready to fight because I I haven't even been talking about Hall of Famers. My whole point was, oh, the, everybody was waiting for the Hall of Famers to go as though it was that easy. It was magically, it was magically cure. like, like yeah. Duke and Carolina were just going to fall fall from grace. No, no, that's not that's not that was never going to happen. So yeah, I mean, look, I I think I think what you were actually kind of getting at right now is the weird vibe around the Wolf Pack right now. I saw this in your timeline last night where you were pointing out that NC State did not come out the way no. they should have come out against Louisville. And I had I saw some people in your mentions like, why, why are you always negative? Now, I, I, I thought I was the negative one. You're being the negative one that night. And all you were saying was, for a team that is up against it, for a team that has some questions about the coach, that was a really eye-opening way to start a game. We didn't see any of that tonight. No. Did not see any From of that tonight. From the jump. Yes. From the jump. And Deidre Horn played. I thought that was a little bit of a, a confidence boost for State, but I thought DJ Burns was really good. I thought they told Quadir Copeland to go take a hike, basically. You remember <laughs> the game mad. in Raleigh where he, he was, was running his mouth like bad diarrhea through the Judah. Tijuana. Like, I don't know what he was doing. And Judah but. Mintz got teed up because he didn't like the way things were happening underneath the basket. He lost his contact. He said something. He said the magic words to the ref. He got teed up. Yeah, that right Judah there. Mintz plays like people think Kyle Filipowski play. Mm. I won't use the word, but I, I think see. you know what I mean. No, I know what you mean. And we're not enough drinks into the day to, to use that. How language. many drinks have you had? Because it's not like the vouchers get you any alcohol. No, there's not. Okay. No. I thought I was the big spender today, which we'll get to later. Uh, did you bring it down here? It's here. Oh, I'm, I'm going to break it out. I'm going to break it Love out it. here really soon. All right. So let's get to some comments. Uh, in the YouTube chat, which is always entertaining, uh, from T Underhill, Michael O'Connell, greater than Cormac Ryan. <laughs> I mean, I, I think what you saw out of Alex, uh, uh, out of O'Connell tonight, was something that they wanted to see out of him all night or all all year. He, he had some wonderfully arched shots sure. tonight. 
in DC. I, Wonderfully arched. I, I hesitate to assign any brilliance to Michael O'Connell, just in the sense that they wanted him to be a guy who didn't make mistakes, got him into their offense, set them up in a way that they needed to. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm not going to relitigate how this team was put together. I'll also say when Modiara is going like he was like, look at that. Look at that line tonight. Eight points, yeah. seven, uh, 14 boards, six dimes, two steals. I'm convinced complete that, and total difference maker. I'm convinced that some of NC State's energy, I, I, I'll i never know the answer. I don't think I'll ever actually get the answer. But I am curious if somebody at NC State played clips of Jim Beheim's broadcast last night of the Wolfpack game. I, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to edit myself here, but I saw him sitting over there just smug doing his Jim Beheim until until doing his Jim Beheim nonsense until Red Panda like, came out. No, but just like, you know, oh, I'm so much smarter than everyone here and look, even even my top assistant can beat terrible old NC State. <laughs> and our guy our guy Joel Barry was over there like, "Really? What is going on right now?" <laughs> because as we know, oh, oh yes. They hate those MFers, not just. I know. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I know. we lost in Atlanta. No, no I, I know. I know. I ah, know. Clemson no, came to our house and beat us twice. The <laughs> only time did. I saw joy on Jim Beheim's face today, tonight, Panda? was when Red Panda came out. Because if you think about it, he's never seen Red Panda before. He's always in the uh, locker room. Yeah, possible. So he got to see the greatest halftime entertainment of all time, even with a little bit of a zip off the fastball. She doesn't have her fastball. I know you speak of Joel Berry. He was the one who came out and uh, tossed the bowls to her and the she, bowl tosser. And she did, uh, she did the thing, but yeah, I, I jokingly tweeted out that I hope at some point after DJ Burns does one of his patented spin moves and makes a bucket, he blows a kiss to Jane Beheim. Cause again, I didn't, we didn't watch the game last night on ESPN, no. but apparently Beheim was like questioning the fitness level. Sure. He was being like a real curmudgeon about the yeah. wolf pack. And if I'm NC state, I play those clips and you're like, he's watching the game. That's his old team. Stick it to him. You know Who what? Knows? Maybe that's what happened. Do you know what though? What's that's that? good. That's good. I want someone to to have something like Joel Berry should be out there right now saying to Syracuse, "How did you let these MFers <laughs> win?" Like you need that. You You're need right. some. Again, what is it about? It's about caring. It is. So if Beheim wants to rep Syracuse, that's the best Syracuse crowd I've ever seen in an ACC tournament game. By the way, it's because there was it's, a big crowd there because, for Syracuse. It's because it's DC, right? DC is a, and we can talk about this with Patrick Stevens in a little bit when he's going to come on here uh, after housekeeping uh, to do a little bracketology. Housekeeping. DC. I understand that the next. I miss our lighting, by the way. I know. I like, know. I, I I need to hold something up just to make sure but everyone it, it knows. Does, that it does add to the whole bunker <laughs> feel that we're dealing with here uh, at, at the, we're so at the Capital One. We Ethan, are spoiled. Ethan has spoiled us. Scott Sharp has spoiled us. So, where was I? What was I talking about? Syracuse, <laughs> Syracuse fans, DC. Syracuse, oh, DC. So here's the thing about thank you. Thank you, Patrick. So in the producer's chair today. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since we had a producer show. <laughs> so DC, if you're not gonna have the tournament in North Carolina, DC is actually the next best place to do it. Yeah. Not, I enjoy I enjoy it here. Not Brooklyn. No, not you know, I would actually argue that you go, be, you just rotate between Charlotte and DC at this point, and you do anniversary events in Greensboro. That's what I would like to see. Now, I know why the ACC tournament is going to be in North Carolina for the foreseeable future because that was all part of the inducements to keep the headquarters in North Carolina and move to Charlotte. But if you think about DC, it's an easy enough trip for everybody in North Carolina, and it's a very transplant heavy. To, hey, I did it in four hours. No, no, you did. And the point is that this area has got so many more fans that are working here young fans that are working here. oh yeah and it's not just triangle fans virginia tech virginia and you mentioned syracuse again a lot of people that are down here working and living here so uh, uh this i is popped from... this comment up because okay um i've seen this in my own phone kevin keats now two and oh since ga gambling has been legalized in the state of north carolina oh wow and a lot of state fans are like i bet on louisville yeah i bet on syracuse yeah. They're all convinced it's their emotional hedge. Of course. That is pushing them. Of course. Of in course. This, in this tournament. From Steve, but would you take State's lineup over Wakes? <laughs> Man, my Deeks. Your Deeks. My Deeks today. When, when Cameron Hildreth decides he's not the best player on the team, yeah. uh, they look good. From, uh, from Brant, not the game score I expected to see when I came in from some evening errands, but it was a nice surprise. I think that's really what a lot of NC State fans were thinking about. From... Patrick, do state fans really want to win these games? They keep winning and keeps keeps uh keeps is keeping his job. You know, 
that's a conversation we can have when this tournament run ends for NC State. I do think there is an element and a con- and a conflicted element of you want to see your favorite team win a game, but you then start to wonder, well, man, I was convinced it was over. What does a run like this do in the calculus for Boo Corrigan and Kevin Keats? I think the I understand the conflicted feelings. I'm not dismissing them. Sure. I think that I'm the more I'm talk I've talked to people, the more the I'm convinced that the decision was made one way or the other before they even played their first basketball game. Could be. And there could have been a conversation that went along the lines of, hey, you're not really giving me a choice right now. Mm-hmm. But if you go to DC and do something, we can talk about this. We again. can talk. I, like I, you and I were, if they I lose to Louisville, there's no, yeah, there's no coming back I, from that. I, I think these, these are all things that happen in real time. Yes. Again, it's not as simple as many people want it to make it to be. I do think they got here thinking, well, this is probably it. But I do think that part of that yeah. conversation was, you make you make a little noise. A noise means you're you're here on Saturday. That, that's that's what noise means. I know what you mean. To be clear, <laughs> from Tyler on the YouTube chat, if this team had shown up at any point post the Clemson game, we would be having a completely different discussion. Yes, yeah, I agree. And that's what's frustrating about watching the second half of the Louisville game mm-hmm. and the, the entirety of this game is, again, when I talk about the culture and the desperation and the urgency, you know, we've talked a lot this year about court storming and what it means for Duke and what it means for North Carolina and why they're the only ones that go through it. They understand every game that they play. They're getting somebody's best shot. Yes. That's the urgency that they play with. That's the urgency those programs play with. The state came out with their hair on fire today. They did. It was great. It was good to see. Uh, this is from Michael. Just to clear things up, I am ready to fire Kevin Keats right now. And at the same time, I am uh, ready to put up a statue sure. if he wins three right. more games. This see? Week. It can be both. It really can be both. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, yeah, the chat on uh, on YouTube is really going back and forth uh, with this uh, with this stuff. So, anyway. Let's see what do we got here from uh, Aaron and State a better team when they aren't just hoping Horn scores thirty. There's something to that. Yes, where you're trying to get points from more guys. I think Horn becomes that person that you have to rely on because he was the only one at points this year that who could consistently make an outside shot. Let's get to some housekeeping. Housekeeping. Big thanks to Enovana for sponsoring housekeeping. Check them out. E N O V A N A dot com green cleaning i've talked about this leading up to the acc tournament i'm going to talk about it while i'm at the acc tournament the obvious house right now is all over the place we're like eight different places at once i'm here we're working we're doing our thing kelly's got another hockey trip to close out the cane season my older son's got indoor percussion this weekend my in-laws are helping out with that as you can see we're very very busy it's a very busy time of the year you know what i don't want to do when i get back Clean toilets. Hell no. How about cleaning the blinds? I hate that. <laughs> I hate cleaning Asking blinds. Asking me to dust? I don't dust. What are you talking about? But Enovana will. So check them out. Enovana.com. Uh, you can do a one-time cleaning. Uh, you can do recurring cleanings like I do. Long story short, they got all sorts of solutions for you. So again, check them out. Enovana.com. A uh, big thanks to Longleaf Swine for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. This is a, a twofer here because Longleaf has great food be a great place to get some stuff catered while you're watching NC State go all the way, right? Right? You got a big... Hey, it's a big four Thursday. Hey, they get to play Duke tomorrow. Right? It's a big four Thursday yeah. tomorrow, right? So, you know what? Go to Longleaf. They got TVs. Get your barbecue. Kick it old school, right? And, more importantly... And use your apps. Yes. But more I'm importantly... so jealous of you people and your apps. But more importantly, 321... Next Thursday, we're going to be there. One o'clock, special live show from Long. Will you eat the chicken pot pie that day? I'll eat anything. Okay. I'm I'm going hard hard in the paint that day. No, it's really, really good. I'm absolutely going hard in the paint that day. Uh, But if you want to order online, go to longleafswine.com. But better yet, just go. I think the weather's nice nice back home, and you'll be able to watch the game and all that fun stuff. I know you're in a radio hurry here, but I got to tell you a story about the last time I was at the swine. Sitting at the picnic table. Yeah. It was like a pre Canes game kind of deal. I'm sitting there and I'm eating and I'm having a shorty, of course. Of course. Shorties don't count. I did not recognize the person, but he comes up to me. He's like, he, he was walking out with his son and he goes, Hey, he goes, You were right about the, the chicken pot pie. <laughs> and I said, Man, if you haven't learned yet that our food takes do not miss, then you're not paying attention. Yeah, that's pretty funny. 
That is pretty funny. So again, big thanks to Longleaf Swan. Again, check them out, longleafswan.com. Also, do, are we sure that we're going to get the two? We've got two roosters showing up next week too? Yeah, Jared's pumped. Man. We're he's, bringing he's ice hype. cream? Yeah. Can I put bourbon in the ice cream? Oh, we can. can. If they bring the bourbon coffee, can I put actual bourbon in that? Yes, we Let's can. Let's go. I'm excited about that. Two roosters. There are no limits. Look, Kevin Keats just won another basketball game on the road. Celebrate with some ice cream like they do. Two roosters. Two roosters.com. They got wonderful flavors updating all the time. You can go to the website, check out what they Lake, got at the Lake Boone. Uh, Lake Boone. I got the Person Street location. Obviously, they got uh, their spot at PNC Arena. The Stormy Tracks always get it done for the kids. And once more, with feeling, our friends at Hometown Realty for sponsoring our, our guys. ACC tournament coverage. Check them out at hometown at myhtr.com. Again, that's myhtr.com. <laughs> were saying i think i i know why you're pumped up you ready why i'm gonna show you why you're pumped up why am i pumped up look at the screen what do we got here look at this that's it look right there what look up on the wall what's on the wall it's a radio clock no that's not i can't even see it i can't even see Uh, it then why are you so whatever you're doing because i want to get to patrick stevens that's why so here's what you need to do here's what we're going to do you put the camera on you, Joe. Okay. And you Patrick's the, gonna scooch. And Patrick's gonna scooch next to me. And we're gonna we're gonna squeeze in here, Patrick. All right. As we're doing all this live on YouTube. We'll everybody, gets live. To see, everybody gets to see the magic that's happening right now. <laughs> oh wait, yo, I was like, what was that noise? I hit the button <laughs> by accident. Crash. By accident there. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Wait, let me turn your mic on. That would be helpful. Hi. 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 Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, did you see the fun fact of the uh, of the ACC tournament so far? So Brian Ives, who works for ESPN, a uh, big part of the ACC network, I see him in the in the tunnel, and I just joke with him. Like, you got any fun facts for me today? Because he's always a treasure trove, tre- treasure trove of fun facts. We use his tweets all the time. And he goes, yeah, actually I do. I go, what? Teams that... Coming in out of this tunnel are 0-5 hmm. so far in the uh, ACC tournament. I went, what? It's like, yeah, this tunnel specifically, 0-5. So it's the visiting team. 0-6 now. 0-6 How after about Syracuse lo- loses. Does that bode well for North Carolina, Joe? No. They're, they're the home team. They're coming out. Oh, it does because they're the home team. They're never coming out of that tunnel. Number one seed. That's right. So that's good. That's a good thing. Speaking of number one seeds, does North Carolina have a chance? Yeah. At a number one seed. I think they do. What do they got to do here to make that happen? <laughs> they probably have to to run the table. Okay. Um, I think it's them, Tennessee, and Arizona. Um, with them in Tennessee having the best shot of the bunch. Um, so I feel like you know, if Tennessee loses, uh that, that'll probably help a bit. Remember, Carolina has the head to head victory. I mean, those those three resumes are all pretty comparable. Mm-hmm. And so Chances are, no matter what, you're looking at two of the three ending up in the West region, two of them ending up in Charlotte, Tennessee, and, and North Carolina, and then Arizona out in Salt Lake. I mean, I, I think you're really not going to see a massive difference in terms of what each of those teams is going to have to deal with. I mean, I think they're going to be four, five, and six one way or the other. So is the power of the license plate... <laughs> Propelling my Deeks into the field. Your Deeks. Your Deeks have some work to do. Uh, your Deeks. Still more work. Still more work. It's been endless amounts of toil for the Deeks. Uh, you know, you look at them right now, and that they're still sitting on those two quad one wins, Duke and Clemson. Uh, opportunity for another one tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so that would certainly have. And the best thing for them tomorrow is when you start looking at those teams that are scrambling for the last few spots. Pitt's one of them. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially an eliminator game. I mean, in some ways, you know, obviously back in the day, the most exciting game of any ACC tournament would be the final going in. Like, I think that's the most exciting game of this ACC tournament is to see which of Duke and and, and Wake or Pitt and Wake winds up uh, knocking each other out. I I shouted you out because I felt like this game was winner goes to Dayton. Winner could go to Dayton. I mean, that's that's, that's, that's very how much I view it. Winner, like I, I, that's always going to stick with me. Like Wake Forest just screams, "I don't know what to do with you." Go to Dayton. I absolutely and still both feel Pitt and Wake or that. I still absolutely feel that way about Wake. You know, Pitt's kind of in an odd spot too. You know, they only have a couple higher end wins. They have two of the quad three losses to Syracuse at home and to Missouri at home, mm-hmm. which 
It's one of those things where you wonder, how did they lose that oh, game? No. Right. Uh, of course, Missouri having not beaten anybody uh, in the SEC this year. but That Pitt, feels like a disqualifier to Pitt, me. It is, it is yeah. one of those things that stands out. But Pitt's metrics are actually, you know, have gotten a little bit better. The other thing working against Pitt, non-conference strength of schedule of 342. Oh, We've seen that before. Did we they had, beat Auburn? Uh, they did not beat Auburn, no. sadly. Okay. Uh, but uh, they do have a win at Duke, a win at Virginia, uh, and the victory over Wake. But, uh, you know, I think Pitt is behind Wake Forest as we sit here right now. I think Wake might be able to get away with only winning one more. I, I think Pitt has maybe a little more work to do. They might have to beat Duke another gotcha. time. Got gotcha. you. How about the team I think you and I disagree about? Virginia? If Virginia loses tomorrow, are they still in the field, do you think? I, I think it's close. You know, you look at them, and the, one of the best things they have going for them at this point is they really haven't messed up. Okay. And that's one of those things that There's stands a value out. That. There's like a value they're, they're, that. That's, that's only good enough to get you to Dayton. Right. But <laughs> but not messing up is actually not terrible compared to some of the other teams in the field. So they Do have we a, want they to have go a, to Dayton if Wade goes? Did we discuss this? I mean, the budget's being stretched a little bit. I mean, if we could get Patrick I will, to help me with some more Big Ten totals. I will say this, we, though. We can get there. I mean, I saw, I saw the water cash you pulled out. <laughs> I'm just saying we can put – I'm willing to put that license plate on the front of the Civic and we ooh, drive to Dayton ooh. with that bad boy. Ooh, the like final that. four run starts there well, how about at the this? first floor. I, I think I would need to cash that wake ticket to win this <laughs> tournament <laughs> in order for us to get there. Oh, man. All right. So – Back to um, so four ACC teams. Four ACC that's teams. what I, that's what I would lean toward. Now I think the, there's a couple interesting elements to this particular week that maybe we don't normally see, and I think we talked about one of them last week, where it's you have most of the time you're looking at bid snatchers, and this year you have bid givers or gifters potentially in okay. Dayton and Florida Atlantic. So the sort of the bid snatching is already built in. But if those teams win, if the FA, if FAU wins the American, if Dayton wins the A-10, that's two extra spots in the field. Okay. And that might be worth okay. an extra spot for an ACC team or an extra Big East team or, or what have you. The, the other thing that I think is interesting is there really isn't a lot of teams when you get beyond the edge of the field mm -hmm. that you're looking at and thinking they have a realistic shot of winning a couple games in their conference tournaments and being able to push their way into the field. Like I think the gap once you get to seven or eight spots beyond the edge of the field is wide enough that it just doesn't matter, which also, by the way, that's a, as a side note, you know, 76 team field, potentially oh, our discussion right now would be talking about, well, is Utah or Memphis or somebody like that going to be the, the last team into the field instead. So, uh, but I, I think those are the two variables, whether you have a Florida Atlantic and a Dayton manage to win their league and create more space for some of these power conference teams. Uh, and also uh, just that there's not that many teams like an Iowa might have an outside chance of Texas A&M. But even a team like that has four quad three losses at this point. Mm -hmm. So there's 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 all these massively flawed teams and none of them particularly stand out, which is what helps a team like a Virginia when you look at them okay. and go, OK, so you've gotten your doors blown off in some of these games, but you haven't lost a bad game yet. And so would you say FAU, though? You don't think South Florida's in without I don't think, winning? I don't think South Florida's in. Really? I do not. No. You look at Oh, because they did absolutely they, nothing out of the league. Well, they did absolutely nothing in the league. See, they kind of – they won the league, but they, <laughs> they basically – they have one quad one win. It was at Memphis. That's oh, they it. did beat FAU. They did, yeah. They, well, they did, but it was at home. Okay. So they don't even get cr that much credit for that. So they have. They also have two quad four losses. They lost to Maine and Central Michigan. That's not good. Uh, the designated survivor in Dayton for the mid majors is going to be Indiana State, right? Indiana State. Okay. Yes. We can line that one up already. I, I, I think that's one of the ones that we can line up. Well, like, you got to put that dude in the tournament, that's right? What, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> okay. Yes. Like, I, I, mean, yeah. I mean, that's that's the sort of team not dissimilar to Drake from the pandemic yes, year okay. from Belmont, where you look at them and you say, well, that's the team that can get clemency, basically. You're, there's not a lot numbers-wise in terms of wins that's going to push them into the field. Their best win on the team sheet is at Bradley. 
um, which isn't really going to help you out very much. They have a Belmont gun in that year uh, over state anyway. Yeah, uh, but, but you, you kind of look at the 28 wins total. Uh, not a lot for all the opportunities they had to take bad losses, like 23 of them. They only have one. Yeah. And the metrics are overall pretty good looking for them. Like you wouldn't sit there and look at them and say there's anything really disqualifying aside from the fact that there just isn't a lot in the way of high end wins. Plus, you know, the metrics, they are 29 in the net, 39 in strength, the record, uh, 42 Ken Palm, 44 KPI. Those are that's right at the edge. Right. And they and their non-conference schedule, even though they don't have those high end wins, is actually 187th. So not terrible. Plus. They have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They do have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The interesting thing, if, if we're going to sit here and assume that there is a designated mid-major spot, <laughs> that makes it a little, that makes it dicey for New Mexico, doesn't it? Yeah, we, we were postulizing that potentially we could get a Patino Patino oh, in, that's right. in Dayton, New Mexico that's versus right. St. John's. I'll believe St. John's when I see them, though. Thing I'll point out about St. John's, one victory over the current projected tournament field. That was against Creighton. Jeez. See, I think that matters. Yeah. I yeah. think it matters. Those are the those are the types of things that they look at. All right, Patrick. Uh, you are gonna be here tomorrow or you're, you're taking here tomorrow. tomorrow? I will be here tomorrow. Okay. So we're gonna talk to you again tomorrow then. Potentially, yes. No, no, there's not potentially. <laughs> I have the Virginia game, unfortunately. Oh, the late game? That's the late that's game. That's the late game. Okay, so we might be double potting tomorrow, I would think. Yeah, no, we're gonna double pod tomorrow because we'll do we've... a post game, post session one. Yeah, okay. So that pit GT pit uh, Wake Forest, Wake yeah. Deeks, yeah, yeah. We'll have to talk about that one. Yes, we'll have to talk about that one, and then we'll we'll do another one after the uh, Duke uh, State game. So um, tell you what, we'll do the afternoon sesh. Yeah, is that, does that work? Because because we do need to get your reaction to the Wake to pit the Wake pit game. Yes, I mean, winner goes to Dayton. Let's go, <laughs> Chilios Deeks. We're gonna My make Deeks. this thing happen. I gotta make this. I like your Photoshop skills today. That you did you? Out. That yeah. was impressive. Very I like sophisticated. That. All right, so we're doing this all live on YouTube. I'm gonna mute your mic now, Patrick. Thank you for coming out. The hottest the mic in the history the of the world. Super hot mic was in effect today, so that's uh, that's good. So I'm gonna move this camera back a little bit in my direction. Thank you, buddy. If you're watching this, we'll I see you tomorrow, you man. Go get your stuff. And Appreciate for, you. And for payment, I'm getting you an ACC tchotchke of some sort. Like I got the, I got the blanket, which I'm about to break out, but. I mean, we have to commemorate, as you call it. I think the cats would love. We might need to get Patrick a blanket if they have another one. Up oh, they there. have them. Okay. Is would the, the cats like that? The cats. The cats like a lot of them. But well, cats never like the thing you buy for them. Uh, kind of like your dad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh <laughs> no! If if I got the box that the blankets were in. Yeah, I know oh, nothing man. about cats. Kitty in a box. Let's go. I mean, they're all about that. that. <laughs> they're all about that. <laughs> all right, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll talk about we'll an OG, OG iPad. <laughs> we'll talk to Pat tomorrow. Amazing. Big thanks to home. Big thanks to Whitaker and Hamer for sponsoring Ovius and Chilio. Check them out. Wh. Lawyer again. That's wh. Lawyer. Hopefully, I will not need to use them on our drive back from Washington D.C. Didn't need to do that on our drive up, so that's good. So again, check them out. Wh. Lawyer. Also, big thanks to Matt Davis over at State Farm Insuregarner.com, the OG Insurance.com, or call them directly at nine one nine seven seven nine. 8277. Save yourself money on home and auto insurance by hollering at Matt Davis. I know a couple of our listeners have done that already. They've saved a lot of money. You can be smart like those listeners. So appreciate them. Speaking of saving money, it's getting warm out. Mosquito season is going to be on us. So go ahead and start bundling and saving with Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority. Check out bugsbite.com. Again, that's bugsbite.com. I know that uh, when I get back from this trip, the grass is going to be tall. The pollen's probably pollinating. The trees are horny. We know what's happening. And I know the mosquitoes are going to be out before you know it, but I also know the treatment's going to be out, and that's going to help me enjoy my backyard. So, again, bugsbite.com, and you can start bundling and saving with your pest service. Next topic, please. So, Gary Williams was in the building today. The former Maryland coach in the house. 
and you tracked them down, Joe. <sighs> All right. So Paul Brazzo, who runs the ACC basketball for the ACC, yeah. was a former assistant for Gary Williams at Boston College. Yeah. So they're standing there. And Gary looks amazing, by the way. He does. It looks really, really he does. good. He does. And, you know, Braz is kind of looking at me like, oh, man, we credentialed you again. <laughs> and I said, I said, Braz, as much as I want to talk to you, Gary Williams needs to know what the Gary Williams death rules are. And what, for those who do not know what the Gary Williams death rules are, what are they? If you have 24 hours, your life depends on winning a basketball game. Yes. You only have 24 hours to prepare. You don't get to pick the team. The other guy doesn't get to pick the team either. It's merely a matter of who will coach that team and who do you want in those 24 hours to prepare your team to win a basketball game. Sure. The ultimate coach him up is Gary Williams. That's mm -hmm. my choice for the Gary Williams death rules. Hence, the Gary Williams death rules. So he's looking at me and he goes, okay. And, <laughs> and he's from New Jersey and Brass is like, he's a Jersey guy. And he goes, oh, where are you from? And I go, no, I go, I go, wait a second here, coach. I said, I'm from the triangle here, sir. When I tell Roy Williams this, when I tell Mike Krzyzewski this, they don't give me a shrug. They're like, really? You're taking Gary over us? So I need you so to... So you're, you're mad that he was I, not, I, he was like, not he impressed. Was, he was nonplussed by I mean, the whole thing. Is it that Gary Williams? I believe that has been explained to me that that's on, that's, that's on brand that's for Gary Williams. That's very on brand for Gary Williams. Yes. yes, that just seems to be the case. Plus, it was explained to me that Gary was trying to talk to Leonard Hamilton. He was. And he that was. you were kind of like, not in the way. But I was. He's like, I'm not here to talk to this, See, this guy. Jabroni. Yeah, yeah. I'm here to talk to Leonard Hamilton. Yeah. But no, Lenny came out of the locker room. That's Then right. he talked to him. It was fine. Yeah, so I, I did not realize Gary Williams still lived around here. Well, where was he going to go? I don't know. Okay. Some people retire. They go he south. He worked for the school for a long time as a fundraiser. He did. He yeah. did. And I think was he I think he was doing some like Big Ten Network stuff too, if I was if I'm not mistaken. Make total sense. It me. would make sense. But to your point, I saw him in the hallway coming in uh when he first got to the building. And it took me a second. I'm like, wait a minute, is that and I was transported. Yes. I was transported in back in time when they were <laughs> kicking and screaming to get an ACC tournament and here they, in DC. And then they, I'm in Siberia, Joe. And then they and then they lost. <laughs> Screw the pitch. <laughs> nah, that's my guy. I enjoyed it. It was good. Not sweating. Oh, you, I'm telling you, you look great. Looked amazing. I hope I looked that good. I, one mistake was I did not tell. I, he probably knows this if he lives around here. But I was going to tell him, dude, you should go check out that DMV wings. They got an old bay wing. But, oh, my really? but my dude knows about wings. Yeah. <laughs> yes. My dude definitely knows all about wings. From David, maybe Gary Williams misses the ACC or is he consulting FSU on a lawsuit? <laughs> <laughs> he was genuinely happy to see Lenny and Lenny was like pumped that he was out there waiting for him. So. I love that. I love that. Um, so we got a couple things that are going to come up here as we're doing this live on YouTube uh, conversation that I recorded earlier with CL Brown. Yeah. Big Louisville day for Courier Louisville. Journal because they moved on from Kenny Payne. Uh, so we'll discuss why it took, you know, why it was so quick with Kenny Payne. What went wrong? What kind of direction are they going in? And here in a second, we're going to talk to Brendan Marks from The Athletic as and I'll set it up a little bit more with uh, with Brendan, but. There's been this kind of like urban legend that Tony Bennett, Virginia head coach, this is the last dance. That he's like so, you know, this is a conversation that's not a whisper. Y yeah. That's like a loud. It's loud enough that like, I'm like, is he okay. really enjoying this anymore? And this makes sense. You know, you see Mike Krzyzewski, he's out. Roy's out. Nick Saban's on Capitol Hill this week talking about how NIL's changed everything. Why am I doing this? Tony's built a little differently. Built a little bit different. He's a young guy. He but he's built different, relatively, yes. And it's been, like you said, it's not a whisper. Enough people are yeah. talking about this sort of thing that uh, I wanted to talk to Brendan, who's actually written about this and just how serious this can be. Uh, this can be taken. But we got J JTB Wolf Gilio. Is the Law of the Wolf tournament? Is this a Law of the Wolf tournament for NC State? Giving some major 2008 vibes. Uh, no, not eight. Eight was they went home. Seven was, was seven. Tampa, where they made the run to the final. Uh, the red jacket. I, I don't know if it's the law or not. Um, like I said, the way that they play today with the urgency and the desperation that they did, I, I think they're starting to believe. And that's what you need. Like, hey, if we play at this effort and to the person who had pointed out when it's not just let's stand around and watch DJ Horn try to score 30 points, you realize the way that different people are contributing. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get 16 points out of Michael O'Connell every game. 
Uh, but we have seen enough out of Modiara to know that he can be a difference maker. It's a good matchup for them. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with Duke. You know, the game in Raleigh, I, I did not feel like they were firing on those yeah, cylinders on in Raleigh. One thing to remember, too, about the state game today, Syracuse had already beaten them twice. Yeah. And yeah, you know how I feel about these things. Back mm -hmm. in the day, the tournament was the third time you'd see a team. And it really is. It's a cliche. I get it. But it's hard to beat a team three times in a year. I've heard that one before. It is. I've heard that one before. It's the unofficial fifth major. From... <laughs> Are you proud of me for not <laughs> jumping into the OG gambling syndicate I, today? I kind of sort of was baiting you. You were. When you didn't, I was like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I was working. I was trying to put some content together. <laughs> From David on the YouTube chat, State winning a game or two just to give fans a glimmer of hope before laying an egg would be very on brand for the pack. Uh, yeah, this was, it was actually 15 down in Greensboro where they did win two games mm -hmm. and then they played Duke and Jaleel Okafor just, just. That was a hammer cock. Yes, you know, was. that was a. Boom. Yes, uh, it's Cat Barber ran into a screen. I think it was a Plumley brother, uh, the youngest Plumley brother that he ran into and was basically laid to waste. And <laughs> you know, it could be like that where you're you're could be you're hoping against hope. And I don't think that obviously that Duke team won the national championship, so that, that that's not what this Duke team is. is that's not what the so. Duke team is. But we'll see. I mean, if you can learn from losses like they did with Syracuse and understand the way that you have to play, then you give yourself a chance. He's so happy. Yeah, Gilio is always happy. He is always happy. Gilio is happy. Because, well, he was happy. Yes. Uh, I think he left the room right now because he's upset that all of his gambling apps won't work. Which is a reasonable reason to be frustrated, in he, my opinion. He's actually so pissed off that he has to physically go to a sports book to gamble. He's like, I need the live line action. He has to, he has to walk outside, turn one corner, yeah. and yes. he's right there. It's yes. terrible. Yes. It's terrible for him. It's terrible for him. All right, speaking of uh, speaking of odds, let's get to the, the, the rumor du jour at the ACC tournament. I love talking about rumors, Brendan. I'm putting your reputation. And by the way, if you're listening right now, Brendan Marks, the athletics hanging out with us here on Opie's and Gilio. There has been a recurring thought, not just this weekend in the ACC tournament, but a recurring thought throughout the entire year that Tony Bennett is so fed up with NIL, how you have to play the game now, all the things that we've talked about with NC State and how you got to play the game and how John Shire has to evolve and what Hubert Davis is doing, NIL rosters and everything else, that Tony doesn't want to play any of that game. I find that commendable. He's the last honest man in a crooked cowboy town. Him and Jim Phillips. Right? <laughs> Protect the fortress. That he's going to walk away. Maybe not here. Right. But he's going to walk away. And I find that to be... It had to start somewhere. Yes. The problem is with Tony Bennett, we don't know where that dude ever stands on anything. Correct. Because he does not talk about himself he does not talk about virginia he does not talk about the league right so i don't know how that stuff kind of generates other than our own projection on the tony bennett yes i think the big thing is like okay so put yourself in tony bennett's shoes okay 2019 you're at the top of the mountain you have just done the thing the big thing mm -hmm. you won it you got your redemption you did it all virginia's a one seed duke and unc top of the best conference in the in the country what has it actually been like since then you lose your entire core. You lose all these guys you developed. Mm -hmm. Then you come back and you try and build it over again. You get upset in the tournament. Okay, that stinks. That hurts. Then those guys all leave again. You have to start playing this rebuilding game. Yeah. And the rebuilding game has not gone well. You bring in a guy to, you know, last year they had a top 50 recruit, Isaac Trout. Bring him in, red shirt, slow cook. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Isaac Trout transfers this offseason. Doesn't play a single minute. <laughs> not one minute and yeah. instead tony bennett's got to go okay well this guy was going to be a starter for me so now i what do i do what do i do yeah and instead he has to go and he has to pull you know a saint thomas transfer and a georgetown transfer not saying those guys are not like good players but clearly they're not a top 50 transfer who's had a year in the system and now it's a situation where whenever virginia's season ends if it's here if it's in the ncaa tournament mm -hmm. reese beekman's gone yeah ryan dunn has probably gone to the nba and now Tony Bennett, it's not just that you don't have a lot of those guys. You don't have any. You have nothing. You have a completely empty cupboard. And I think it's a fair question if you're Tony Bennett to go, am I ever going to have a re again? Probably not. 
Never again. Unless you evolve. And I think that is an irreconcilable difference. This is a story I've been wanting to do for a while. I think one of the reasons why younger coaches are coming in and having the success they are versus having to, the, you know, people who have had to adapt and change and mm -hmm. the ones who are now following Jay Wright and Roy and Kay out the door yeah. is because they have never known anything different. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because I do think it's tied to even our own business, yes. right? There's only so many of us in our business that are willing to get with whatever it is that is how you get the news out, yes. how you get your takes out. You know, all of this stuff that's in front of you right now, from the roadcast or the laptops, the mics, I can literally fit all of this into my backpack. Correct. It is a an amazing time in technology yes. that anybody can do this. Right. But a lot of people don't. Right, exactly. Because they're used to a way that it's always been. I go to a studio. I do this. I show up and I do my thing all the time. And the young folks who are online, social media, doing TikToks, reels, the grind of all that stuff, that's how they grew up. They don't know any different. Correct. Whereas for people my age, as I approach 45, it's like learning how to ride a bike again. Correct. It's pretty wild. Yeah. So I get, that's why I've always understood the older guys. Yes. Tony Bennett's not that old. He's not, but he's of that mindset. And he has now been he's an old soul is what you're telling me. He, you said yourself, he's nah, no, one he of the is. last of this gener. He, he, he really is. And like you said, like he's never, he was never a guy who like, Kay, you know, is still involved in basketball, still does stuff with NBA as a special yeah. advisor, has had conversations about where the league should go. Roy has done the, some of those things. Jay mm -hmm. Wright is obviously still very visible. Tony doesn't touch it. Has never touched it. And so I don't think, what is there holding onto him? He went to the top of the mountain. He made Virginia into a thing. He made a ton of money in the process. He's incredibly well respected. He's going to go in the Hall of Fame one day. Yeah. What is Tony Bennett playing for at this point? I don't like that. <laughs> I, I honestly don't like that because you, so like the trick with Roy, this is where I guess true Hall, you say Hall yeah, of Famer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay, sure. He's I going guess. to. He's going I to. I guess he revived Virginia's program. They won a national championship. I get all that stuff. But to be elevated into that greatness, you look at what Mike Krzyzewski has been able to do as though he only did it one way. He evolved multiple times That's over true. the course of over the course of 40 years. That's true. Roy's greatest trick was that he was stubborn. Yes. And that I'm going to do it the way that I want to do it for as long. I want to see how long I can do it my way. And it eventually got to a point where he couldn't do it anymore. And right. he walked away. He right. just got fed up. Yes. Right? Nick Saban, for as much as he wants to go to Capitol Hill this week and talk about NIL and, you know, Miss Terry said, uh, why are you even doing this? Yeah. Nick evolved. Yes. He always announced he was going to evolve too. He right. told you, are you sure you want this? You do? Cool. Now I'm going to do I'm it. Gonna I'm going to beat you. Right. I'm going to do it better than you. So that's where. I'm not trying to diminish Tony. It's almost like I'm kind of, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Cool. Right. I'm not going to fight you on that. However, there are others in this oh, no. business who have evolved at the point that you were. Yes. And it would bother me if that's how he wants to get out. I don't doubt that Tony Bennett can evolve. Yeah. You know, we were just having this conversation off the air. Like, I, he's probably the best coach in the ACC. He still, is. Still, no, he is. He's still he the is. best coach. If he wants to evolve, he could. Mm -hmm. 100%. It's just, do you want to? If and you know, I, fine. And I don't think he wants to. Yeah. If that's I don't the think case, he has. He, I don't think he has ever necessary. Like Tony Bennett is in there for his players. He's there for winning. You know, like when I first. This is a great story. You'll appreciate this. Okay. When I first got this job, the first time that I met Coach K, I had never covered him before in any capacity. First mm -hmm. time meeting him after a press conference, just for a minute, just to say hi. I'm Brendan. I'm with the Athletic, and I said. Two, said two things to him. I said, number one, let me know if there's anything you, that pisses you off, and I will not do that. Yeah. <laughs> and number two, I'm excited to work together. And he said, we're not going to be working together. <laughs> he said, I'm here. <laughs> he, he said, I'm at this point in my career. I care about my players. Yeah. I care about my program. Yeah. And I care about winning. He's like, I understand you have a job to do, and I'm not going to be, you know, obfuscative. I'm not going to be in your way. But he's like, we're not, we're, like, we're not, the idea that we're going to work together oh, is not a thing. That's amazing. And it's amazing. <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. And I think that the thing is, Tony is the same way. Okay. I think he, the the big picture is not for him. It's never been for him. Speaking of uh, Duke in, in Carolina, and Brendan Marks is hanging out with us from the Athletic here at the ACC tournament in Washington, D.C. So I, the further I've gotten away from the Duke Carolina game this past Saturday, the more I'm convinced that that's just a bad matchup for the Blue Devils. Yes. It, 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 that is a, if, if Duke sees Carolina in the NCAA tournament where they see him here, in Washington, D.C., I'm like, okay, well, I know how this is going to go. It's a right. bad matchup, right. straight up. Right. And I think it's clouded what I've seen mostly out of Duke this year, which is a good team. Good not team. A, not a great team. No. But they have they are winning in two years of data with John Shire. 
they're winning in a very workmanlike way. Yes, much more than they have ever really in the last decade for sure i mean honestly maybe shire got a oh, maybe that's shire's entire motif because the 2010 national championship team was the outlier of the coach k championships in that how they got there very workmanlike everybody understood their roles so i i i maybe maybe you agree on this i don't know but i still like duke it's easy to get wrapped up in like you know the kyle filipowski stuff you know john shire you know apologizing to the fans and all stuff it's whatever when i just strip all the other stuff away and i just try to watch this as a basketball team they can still win this tank they, oh, they can win this thing absolutely unless they draw unc unless they draw unc <laughs> yeah my big thing is like going back okay so go, go back to this time last year derek lively leaves and it's like okay what's duke gonna do at center and they flirt with a bunch of dudes in the portal yeah they don't get any of them and basically from that point on the question was like okay what's what's who's duke center and the answer has been Kyle Filipowski, but really to me, the answer is nobody. Nobody. They don't Kyle, have one. Kyle Filipowski is a seven foot four. Mm -hmm. My colleague John Hollinger is here. He used to be a general manager for the Grizzlies. That is, we were talking about that earlier today. NBA scouts want to know is Kyle Filipowski a four or a five? And John's like, he is a four. He's a you four. Watch one game of Duke. He's yes. a four. He's a four. He's a good four. Um, but they do not have that. And that's why that UNC matchup is so bad for them. And that's the thing that scares me. I do think Duke is good. I do think Duke can make the second weekend. Mm -hmm. I think inevitably in a six game tournament, Duke's going to run into a team that has a big <laughs> a competent big man yes and that's that's blouses um, meanwhile with carolina the only my only question for carolina once they get here or when they get to the ncaa tournament is do they do they get it do they understand that if they're going to win they have to play a, and hubert davis to his credit i always tell listeners all the time listen to the coaches in their press conferences they'll <laughs> tell you exactly yeah what's going on yes and hubert davis has been adamant about you have to play a certain way on this team if you're going to be successful and when they were kind of going through their little ups and downs in the slogs they weren't no they felt they fell off defensively the question is was what we saw in january the outlier and they fell back down to what they actually are or can they get it back to that level they went through a slog i don't know the answer to that i think they've been better i do think they've been better my my thing with with unc this year is and i th actually think this is probably the biggest difference between duke and unc in my eyes role definition mm-hmm I don't know that Duke still has role definition. Really. No, they don't. And UNC has had that from day one, game one. Yeah, if Chilio came back from the sports book right now, he would tell you that Duke doesn't have a bus driver or that no. should be Jared McCain. Duke needs assigned seats. They don't have it. No, they have a free for all. Carolina, I know the deal. Yes. And they've had that even in the bad moments. Yes. Hubert puts Elliot Cadeau back in the last second of the Kentucky game because you know what? That's my point guard, mm -hmm. and that's the guy I'm going to trust to make a play. And you know what? If I got to fall on the sword, I fall on the sword. Yeah. He has always had that, and that's my biggest thing with Duke. You don't have a big, and I, you know, I think if you went in that Duke locker room after a game, you said, who's the best player on this team? And you asked every player in that locker room. I bet you get four different answers. <laughs> <laughs> you might. And I think that's that the true. inherent that's the inherent problem because if you go in the UNC locker room, they're all pointing at one guy. Yeah, they're all pulling, they're, they're pointing at RJ. It's very, very simple. That's the right answer, right? Um, boom, boom. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure. I'm just making like, wait a minute, yes, did I get that yes, wrong? Yes. It is RJ, right? Yes, yes. No, I know. They all say Hunter Salas. It's that's what they say. <laughs> you know what I think is funny? And as we're talking about Duke and UNC and, and here, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world if UNC doesn't win this thing. No, I don't think so either. The last ACC tournament champion to make the final four was UNC in 2016. No one has done it the last six years. So I don't place too much stock into that. And I think ultimately at the end of the day, you know, if you crunch the numbers, which someone much smarter than me can do, because I can't. Yeah. If you look and you see, do you want to really go into the NCAA tournament on a nine-game winning streak? No, you don't. I don't think you do. No, you don't. I'm with you. Unless you're UConn. But then maybe that's, you know, it happens from time to time. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, Brandon, thanks, man. Thanks yeah. for hanging out. Thank you for having me. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you later. Big thanks to Homefield for sponsoring Ovias and Jillio. Check them out, homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code OG23 to save 15% off your order. Again, that's OG23. What are you laughing about? I mean, Homefield, good stuff. Yes. Third month mania. Third month. Third month. Yes. Their Carolina stuff's really good. It is. We never got that bomber jacket, did we? I'm telling They're you. They're doing a restock uh, on the bomber I'm jackets. I'm telling you, I tried. 
I tried. I know. I know you did. But anyway, go to homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code OG23 to save 15% off your order. Big thanks to Breeze Through for sponsoring us. Check them out, breezethrough.com. You know what I could use right now? Dark roast. Dark roast because the the arena coffee oh, is suspect. Super sus. I think that's a rule. Super sus coffee, man. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want to have good coffee. I, I will say this about, and I, I know that people who are watching probably don't give a damn about the poor media and the freebies, right? Yeah. But I will say that this year in D.C., the snack game is atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. Struggle, man. It's fine. Nobody gets the level of the Greensboro Coliseum in terms of the snack no. game. Because you are you're the snack king. I know. All right. I know. I'm left to my own devices. Here. And, and in Greensboro, you can put together an entire meal of trash snacks. <laughs> it is amazing. Amazing. But here it's like popcorn and some muffins that they probably left from a breakfast from a couple weeks ago, best I can tell. Anyway, all this to say, I could really use some breeze through coffee right now. So check them out, breeze through.com. And big thanks to Butcher's Market. For sponsoring us, check them out, butch, thebutchersmarkets.com. Uh, I always love it when people get in the comment section and tell us what they got the last time they went to the butcher's market because it always makes me go, oh, I've been meaning to try that. So you can head on over. Uh, they've got their um, steak of the month, which is great, a lot of fun, keep you on your toes. Um, they got prepared meals, which is what I did back at the house this week to make sure that everything was easy. And they can make those things easy for you as well. So, again, check them out. Butcher's Market, locations across the Triangle, locations across. Uh, they got, I think, another shop opening up in Wilmington, but they already have one up in Wilmington. So, again, go check that out. Big thanks to DraftKings. Use the promo code OG24. I've been receiving some messages from listeners about our group. I thought oh, the, the the betting group yes. that's in the DraftKings app. I've put the link out, but I guess it's not visible in the app. Like if you search OG Gambling Syndicate, it's closed. I don't know how to open it. Okay. <laughs> so it's a, I really don't know how to open it. It's a sneaky link, as the kids like to oh, say. Jeez. You're in timeout. <laughs> So if you want to join the group, just like message me and I'll send you the link. Okay. And then you all can get in the OG gambling syndicate group. Cool. Perfect. You got a new, you got a new OG gambling syndicate podcast out today, right? It did a lot of golf picks. We made our picks you for love the golf. players. You golf, love golf. Golf betting is the best betting. It is the best odds. It's the best payout. Now, the only problem with golf betting is if Scotty Scheffler who won last week at the Arnold Palmer and has been at a Tiger Woods level for all but one thing. Yeah. Putting. Yeah. If he's going to putt like he did last week, it's it's a wrap. Like okay. he's going to win this week. He's going to win at the Masters. He'll win, you know, five or six times on the tour this year based on a lot of the better players right now are in live. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you're beating half of a field at this point. So I went and made a ridiculous parlay, a $5 parlay, a four-pick par parlay for the state Syracuse game. On the app or upstairs? On the app. Nice. Did not hit. Any? Shocker. Did you, did you I hit any? I hit, I hit none of them. The biggest See, gamble. Now, if you've the done biggest this again, gamble, that's something going there. You, if you're you right. Hit, if you hit none, that is the equivalent hit, of being all right. I hit none. Because if people were to fade you. Because I had the situation where I had Syracuse with the lead at half, state winning. And then I had state winning that by... wasn't crazy. I don't think that was crazy. I also had state winning by one or two points. Not crazy. I also did not realize... I mean, DJ Horn was a game-time decision, so mm -hmm. I thought Casey Morsell would rack it up. Did not play well. He did not play well today. Yeah. So, and there was one other one that was in that four pick, and I just, I got them all wrong. Just all wrong. Again, there is a value in being You're all right. wrong. You're right. This is now twice <laughs> it's happened. But I, I think people are now starting to pick up on my DraftKings uh, strategy. I'm just putting $5 down on the most ridiculous parlays, and if it hits, I am, you are never going to hear the end of it. Scratching and poping. You, are, you will never hear the end of it. Uh, I ran into Anthony over at uh, Oakwood Pizza Box, yeah. who's been hanging out. And I was explaining this to him, like all excited, like, oh, yeah, I got like this dumb five team parlay. I've got this. Oh, my, my personal favorite. I used a bonus bet on Drake May being the first quarterback taken in the draft because why not? He goes, absolutely. Moonshots, baby. Moonshots. I'm like, all right. So you get it. Anthony gets it. So use those promo codes. OG 24. Got anything for tomorrow yet? 
Uh, not tomorrow, but if you're, if you, I don't even have to say if you know a guy, if, if you know a guy, you can find a guy. Yeah. Get Clemson right now on the live line. They're down 10 in the first half of this game. Okay. They're going to come back and win this game. You just have to get the right number. I see. I see. Gotcha. But I, I'm, I've quietly had a nice little day. It was a rough start. <laughs> It's a rough start, <laughs> but the Deeks took care of me. That's good. And that was good. That's good. The wait is over. This week is a big week in North Carolina because legalized sports wagering is live. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NASCAR, live, folks, as we've been talking about it in North Carolina. And you can legally bet on all your favorite sports anytime, anywhere right here in North Carolina. If we were in North Carolina, that's what we'd be doing right now. And for a limited time, new customers who sign up with the promo code OG24 and bet $5 will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. They got the best features, all that fun stuff, same game parlays, which is what I'm all about, player props, etc. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using that code OG24. Bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code OG24. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-185543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and used under license. I do have one play for tomorrow specifically. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize Andrew Novak was from Raleigh, went to Wofford. He's a, he's a PGA golfer. You can get him at plus 550 to finish in the top 20. Okay. Plus 550. That's a not, that's, those are odds that you kind of like. Not to win, but to finish in the top 20. Yeah. Raleigh guy. Uh, I like the play. He's been in the top 10 at the two other TPC courses this year. This is obviously a TPC course down in Sawgrass. So if you, like as AT put up here, hello bonus bets on golf today based on the syndicate. That was one of them that I gave away. So. Uh, the golf bets, believe it or not, are, pretty, you, are pretty good. You have been preaching It's that. the only thing I can do. Yeah, you've been I, preaching I, I, it. I am not going to. Not darts? <laughs> no, not, not live darts? Not, not the, dark, the, the darts live line is not. And look at this. BC now up 32-18, by the way. They're just pounding them. Oh, uh, could, boy. And you know what happened? I picked Clemson to win this of tournament. Of course. <laughs> there goes one of my bonus bets. <laughs> Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline from the Courier Journal, he is CL Brown. He covers Louisville. Used to hang out in the Triangle, covering Triangle hoops. What's up, CL? What's up, man? I always hang out in the Triangle. No, I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> uh, but you're going to be hanging out in the coaching search realm now. It's not a fun place to hang out. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> it is the bad. It is the bad place for a beat reporter on a team, man. It really is. All right. So, I guess I guess the question we can start off with with Kenny Payne and Louisville is. Why didn't it work out? A number of reasons. I think, one, I mean, people expected Louisville is a perennial, you know, top 10 program in the nation. People expected that to be enough. Even though they still had the cloud, the NCAA hadn't ruled, the IARP hadn't ruled yet. Right. So it was kind of a similar thing when North Carolina had those allegations just kind of hanging for all that well, time. They'll tell you the same thing with State and the IARP. It yes. took, for, it took yes. forever, and, you know, Kevin Keats has to recruit and deal with all that stuff in the background. And it's really worse than the actual punishment. It is. In all three cases. Yes. That is <laughs> that actually, to me, is the punishment. Yes. Being yeah. under that investigation the entire time. So he came in under that, and I don't think he fully – I think he thought he had more time than he did to turn things around. Mm -hmm. I, I really think he – if he did it again, he would have been more aggressive trying to get whatever was left in the portal when he got hired. Yeah. And build with some veterans just to win quickly. Um, and even chase some people off, to be honest, from the Louisville <laughs> roster he inherited. Right. Um, but you know, he didn't do that. And he also, I think what hurt him was kind of staying in the same mindset after that four and twenty-eight year. Mm -hmm. Didn't shake up the staff at all. I mean, the recruiting class was top 10. Sure. Nobody knew Trent Flowers was going to bounce right before classes started, you know, near the end of August. Mm -hmm. and, and that obviously hurt. But um, he probably should have got some older guys. He didn't have enough veterans on his team. It was a young team. And again, 
it just spoke to him thinking he had more time. It gets to something that Joe and I talk about all the time and that coaches don't have as much time as they think they do. It's a year to year proposition. Thanks to NIL and the, yeah. and the roster management. You can, you can get older real quick if you commit to it. Like Duke probably would like to have their transfer portal, um, uh, tasks, their, their goals revisited because they yeah. could use a five this yeah. year. Right. It's not that they didn't try and go get one. It just didn't work out, but man, if they really could have, and that, but that'll change next year. You know, they learn and they move on. So I guess that was that was another mistake. And look, it's not like I watched Louisville a ton this year, but when they were in the building, you shouldn't have watched Louisville. When they were here visiting a local team, the as the kids would say, the vibes were off. Yeah, it didn't look like the team was really having a good time. Kenny Payne didn't really look like he was having a good time. I get that you losing like, does that to you, oddly but enough, that's the impression though, that it came off. I, oddly as. enough, they those kids never quit. Sure, and it's it's such a low expectation bar to quit. quit clear. <laughs> yes, but I do give them credit because they they fought. I mean, that Carolina game, I think they had it at five in the second half. Yeah, you know, and and they ended up covering. I think I forgot what the spread was going into it, but I remember that that Louisville covered the spread. These are things game. I care about now. Thanks to DraftKings, <laughs> exactly. Thanks to DraftKings. <laughs> but there's a but there's a bigger issue with Louisville that I think a lot of programs are dealing with because remember when Chris Mack took the job, it was very much like we got our guy. Yeah, it was a foregone conclusion. We're going to be fine. They weren't fine. They weren't fine. It was not a good fit, apparently. And then now with Kenny Payne, I kind of get the same idea. Like he's a recruiter; it's going to be fine. Yeah. We got money. Obviously. It was not fine. So is this a lesson that Louisville has learned? Is there more to the idea of neither coach had a clean slate? I know that's what the AD said today. Yeah. I mean, where do they go going forward? I think I think some of this has humbled Louisville. Okay. You know, um, but I think going forward, they still had, hadn't changed expectations. Of course not. It changed how fast they think they can get it turned around. Um which depending on who they hire and depending if they can retain like the core of this team, they just need a few pieces. I, I really believe they only need a couple of pieces and this team will be fine. They'll be back in the NCAA tournament. So is it a name? Is it a uh, up and coming guy? I mean, what what's the direction Louisville goes in now? Do they bring Rick Patino back? No. I'm but- kidding. <laughs> He's Richard, clear. I mean, Richard clearly no. doesn't like the facilities at the St. John. So, baby, he comes back. I don't know. Um, I, I think they're going to shoot for the stars. And, and that means the the Scott Drews, Billy Donovan's of the world. Chris Beard. Floated out there. Chris Beard just re-upped. Oh, he just and, re-upped? Yes. Okay. And one thing that Josh Hurd said, the athletic director said, was, you know, he, he had a line about integrity. Okay. And it wasn't like. He no, wasn't taking thinly veiled shots at anybody, yeah. but given what they've been through, they can't afford somebody who's even close. That's why Bruce Pearl would also not be somebody that would be in this conversation. They they can't afford to have anybody who's had any sniff of investigation. So what you're telling me is that there trouble. will there will not be a strong ass offer for Will Wade. <laughs> That's what you're telling me, CO. That offer will not be coming. <laughs> okay, just making sure on that one. All right, before we get out of here. Duke and Carolina. I'm convinced, now that we're a little further away from it, that Carolina's just a bad matchup for Duke. I agree. It's just a bad matchup. Yeah. I so agree. I have to start judging Duke on the idea that you won't see them in the tournament again, right? Well, never say never. Here's but the thing, I, though. Even though it's a bad matchup, I just don't see any dogs on Duke. I, I think didn't that's want, what it comes down to. Dude, I didn't want to admit that. <laughs> I've been trying to like, no, 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 McCain can be that guy. Or, you know, Filipowski, you know, he wears it on his face, but, you know, he'll power through yeah. it. No. And the fr- you're right. And the more I've watched out of Carolina, out of Duke, and the way they did not return the volley of what we saw in Chapel Hill out of the gate, and it yeah. was just a continuation of what happened in Chapel Hill, I was almost like disappointed in myself going, damn it. The people <laughs> who were calling Duke soft or they don't have the dogs, Jay Williams on ESPN, like if, you know, let the big dogs eat, you know, that yeah. stuff. I'm like, Damn, I guess they were right. <laughs> they don't have that. Well, that's, Jay like, that's unfortunate. Duke, <laughs> Jay Williams picked Duke right before the game. I know it's funny that he's um, bad. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think Cormac Ryan and Harrison Ingram. You can't underestimate just the attitude right. and kind of the swagger they brought to Carolina's locker room this yeah. year. And I, I think that's been a 
big boost for them. And enjoy them too, because you're not going to get a Cormac Ryan or a Harrison Ingram every single season. You're not going to get a Brady Manick every single season. Yeah. Sometimes you whiff and you end up having uh, no tournaments to go to in one season. CL, appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you later. Always. Not so much, uh, hey Joe, questions to get to. It's it's more about, um, well, actually, they are hey Joe questions. Hey Joe, did you buy the blanket? I hope you did. Hey Joe, did you buy the blanket? Yeah, did I? Is buy it a blanket or a towel? It's a blanket. So, um, quick context. I'm up in the concourse looking for a place to eat. All right, I ended up going with this smash burger place. Okay, it was pretty good. Now the smash burger and fries, no drink. With tax, ended up being $27.99. So there that, went the voucher. That's your afternoon voucher. That's my afternoon voucher. Dunzo. Burger was good. Legit smash burgers. But as I'm walking around, I'm, I'm thinking, all right, well, we got to buy a T-shirt that has all the... I'm going to buy a pennant before we get out of here. That it's has... the same pennant we already have, though. Do, but we don't have that pennant up in the we, studio. You no, know, it's it's at my house. Oh, well, then bring it in. Okay. So I'll save the money. Do you want a hoodie? No. You want a T-shirt? No, we need next year is what we need to do. Let's put it in the budget for next year because we'll need the new pennant with You're the, right. the team star. Right. Mike's. So as I'm walking by, there's one kiosk. Yes. There's one kiosk that has uh, a blanket. I'm like, no. no. I initially thought it was a towel. I'm like, yeah. oh, I will absolutely buy a towel for the pool. You no, know, it was a blanket, Joe. And I thought mm. to myself, you know, while we watch the conference burn, this can keep, keep us, us warm, warm uh, while it's all happening, right? Hopefully, it's flame retardant. But anyway, <laughs> stop, chop, and roll. <laughs> it's so, blue for the uplifting. Yeah. So it was 50 bucks. And at the very least, I told you they always love the blue teams. Right. It's 50 bucks. And now you have like a distress signal here yeah, in this bunker. Like, oh, help us out. <laughs> help us out. So, I mean, it's a little thin. The backside's got a nice. Somebody made that. Well, I know it's, I'm telling you, the woman Wincraft. who makes the cookies. It's Wincraft, dude. It's it's fanatics. So it, hopefully it won't fall apart. But anyway. Bites, lip, tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my here's my goal. Here is my goal. Is that when uh, probably tomorrow night. No, Friday night or tomorrow night. When the games are over and stuff like that, I'm going to lay this blanket out on the court. And then I'm going to lay on it. I'm just going to be all like this. And you're going to take a picture. Yeah, I'm on it. Let's do it. We might not be invited back to an ACC tournament if that's the case. But I mean, there's a chance. This is a day-to-day -day situation, sir. What's day-to-day? What's day -day? <laughs> Everything, man. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead. Make, make a Snuggie out of it. Make a little Snuggie out of this. Pop some arms. Yeah, from Steve. You could do that for OnlyFans. Yeah, I might do it for OnlyFans. <laughs> just saying. You never know. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this. And cover my ears with it, and maybe I'll get some sleep. Uh, you gotta beat me. You gotta beat me to sleep. That's, that's the that, rule. That's not. That's not happening. Your your snoring is. Hopefully, I'm not gonna give myself an ear infection from sleeping mm. with my AirPods. Yeah, be careful with the brown nose going. No, with the brown noise going. Uh, but anyway, I'm very happy with my fifty dollar ACC blanket. One other note, and this is this this bothered me, and. Uh -oh. I added what bothered you? It I added Wake Forest athletics director John Curry. We saw John Curry earlier today. And <laughs> they come out where it's like all these teams. Yeah, we didn't have a Nike team yesterday. Yeah, so we all we got were like the Adidas things. There was a new balance. Our moment. Our moment. We got now. But <laughs> we got tonight. <laughs> Not a love song. But maybe that's is that is that what they is that what they should wear? We got tonight. <laughs> Why don't you stay, babe? <laughs> Here in D.C. Let's make it last. Let's find a way. Hey, look, that Bob Seger track is a banger. Regardless. So they're wearing these Our Moment shirts. No Nike. Nike comes out today, and everybody's got some energy. So like NC State, Syracuse, Syracuse warm-up shirts were Cuse energy. Mm. Are we going to get heels energy? Are we going to get Wait for it. Duke energy? Big Duke energy. I wanted Big Deke. That's energy. what was missing. It was right there for you, Wake Forest. It was right there. You got the energy. Why didn't you just put Big Deke energy on there? I would have bought a shirt right on the spot. 
right on the spot. I don't know. They probably don't have the word deep copyrighted, by the way. <sighs> Might want to send out a word to Jamie. Yeah, maybe. Breaking tea. Maybe. An- Ooh. Big. Oh, you don't even need. I mean, you could probably even get away with it with like a shadow outline of, of the deep. All right. I'm going to text Jamie White. Right, I'm going to hit end stream as we wrap things up. And I'm going to. I'm going to text Jamie over at Breaking Tea. We're going to get a big Deke Energy shirt. Let's do it. We can't use the walking guy. Well, why can't we use the uh, R.J. Reynolds tobacco building Yeah, in, in Winston-Salem? That that exudes big Deke Energy, you know? Lich. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up uh, for another live YouTube after dark. We will be doing a double tomorrow. You want to do a double tomorrow? Yeah, we need to. All right, we'll do an afternoon session after North Carolina and, of course, the uh, Wake Forest pit game, and then we'll be back in the evening following the NC State Duke game. So be on the lookout for that. Thanks to everybody who checked us out tonight. Thanks to everybody who's checked us out this week, and thanks to everybody who will be checking us out the rest of the week. A lot of like, a lot of nice messages uh, that I've been yeah. receiving from listeners, whether it's in the Instagram messages, uh, emails, things like that. A lot of people appreciating the ACC coverage. And we appreciate you listening. We will see you tomorrow. Mm-hmm.